Each year, Blaustein undergraduate students complete an internship in public health or planning and public policy. Each student creates a poster to present their research. This tutorial will help guide you through the poster creation process. The first step in getting started with the poster is to set the page up with the correct dimensions. So create a new PowerPoint presentation and then um, go to the design tab at the top and then click on page setup on the left and we want to keep the slides in landscape mode and we want to make the width 42 inches and we want to make the height 38 inches and then hit OK and you should end up with a shape that that looks like this the um, 42 inches works well with our plotter printer that we, we print them out on. The next step is to make the page completely blank. So if you go back to the home button, you can click on layout and then blank and that will give us a nice blank page to start adding our text to. The next step is putting all of your text on the poster as much as you can so that you can lay it out, figure out how many columns you need. Most of the poster layouts have a three column approach. You can do some different things as long as it's legible, as long as the eye flows around it. We're going to be doing a, a very typical layout for this example. So to get started just go to insert text box and, and draw a text box at the top and this is where the title will be. And then you'll want to insert text boxes. I would definitely make the headers individual text boxes. Um, maybe instead of header one I'll put something that's typical, something like history here. And then make a separate text box for the text that's going to go under history. And oftentimes these, this is, is bulleted text. Now when it comes to fonts, I um, want to keep some, a couple things in mind. First, bigger the better. I think that this is a little bit large uh, for the bottom of the poster, but I would say 40 points and up. So something like 44, maybe for the headings you could make that even larger, like 54. Um, the title, you'll have to see how long your title is, but bigger the better. Um, I think this 82 point looks looks nice, and so the bigger the better on, on the top title. When it comes to fonts, um, general rule of thumb is 2 max, and so for, and make sure that it's something easy to read. Fonts can be a lot of fun, but you have to, it has to be legible for this. So your computer will have different fonts. That's another thing to keep in mind if you're going to be moving between computers. Make sure it's one of the fonts that is is fairly standard. So maybe we pick um, this Calabri for the titles and for the text we pick um, maybe a serif font like Times New Roman. So serif fonts have these little tick marks. If we zoom in a little bit you can see that this is a sans serif font and the edges are smooth and this is a serif font that has these little tick marks and this is a, a fairly typical setup for headings and text. Throughout this lesson I will be talking a lot about aligning objects and I like to turn on the, the guides and they're a little bit hard to find so let me go over that real quick. So if you click on any object then go to the Arrange button and go down to Align and then go down to Grid Settings. This is the different grid settings. I like to display the drawing guides on the screen. You could also display the grid on the screen and then choose the spacing, but I just like the drawing guide, so I'm going to hit OK. And what this does is it divides your project into quarters so it's a little bit easier especially when you're working on something as large as a poster to kind of feel out where you are on the page. And it's also easy to see that your 
different elements are aligned correctly on the page. For instance, this looks like it's pretty close, but if we go to Arrange, Align, Align Center, you can see that now it's definitely snapped to that center line. So here are a couple of tips on dealing with text that has been imported from somewhere else. So if you copy-paste text from another document or from the internet, sometimes it'll come through with a bunch of formatting that you don't want. The first thing that you can do is to highlight all of the text and click this button here, which is the Clear All Formatting. It'll remove any formatting, bold, italic, anything that's out of the ordinary, just sort of take it back to the normal text. The next thing that my, one of my favorite tools is the Format Painter. So I want this text to look like this text. And I could manually go in and change the font and change the size and all that stuff. But here's a great shortcut. If you highlight just a little bit of the text that you want to copy, then click the Format Painter. And then run your mouse across all of the text that you want to change and let go. And then it'll automatically get the same format as the text that you use the Format Painter with. Next we're going to talk about logos. So the logos are very important for your poster. Most of the time you're going to put them at the top of your poster in the header section. You can put them other places. Um, in my example I'm going to put them up at the top. So most of the time you have two. The first is the Rutgers Blaustein logo and the second is the agency that you worked for. So the Blaustein logos are in two locations. The first location, if you're an undergraduate student it, doing your internship, they're going to be on the Sakai site in a folder for the logos. For faculty, staff, graduate students at the Blaustein School, these are also located on the S Drive or the Common Drive under Logos New 2007 and then the Posters folder. In this folder, I have three versions of the Rutgers logo. The first is all black. The second is the red and gray, and the third is the white transparent. This is the one you would use on a dark background. You can't see it here because it's all white. So in this case, I'm just going to use the, the black ruckers, and you see it comes in nice and large. I'm going to put it up here at the top. The second logo, it's really important to try to get either a high resolution or um, an EPS version, which is the vector version of the logo. Some of the agencies don't have that. You just have to do the best you can. Um, try to ask the marketing person or the advertising person or the web person at that agency if they have, get, say, give me the biggest logo you've got. Okay. So some of these we have started to collect in those same locations. So I've got, this is the um, PNG version. I also have the EPS, which is the vector version of this Cancer Institute Robert Wood Johnson logo. And this is one that we got from them. Now this one you can stretch out a little bit because it is a vector logo. Okay, so make sure that um, the logos are tough, okay, and sometimes they also limit the colors that you're going to be able to use because some of the logos have a lot of colors in them. But we'll get to the colors next. So that's inserting the logos. So next we need to talk a little bit about color. Um, obviously this is pretty boring at this point and, and color really helps draw the eye to your poster. If you go to the design tab at the top, one of the options, there are some built-in themes as you know within PowerPoint and you could play with those and see if any of those um, really meet your needs for the posters, but really they're for presentations. They don't always look so great on the poster. But I really want to focus right now on, on these color schemes. So there are a lot of built-in color schemes within Microsoft Office and they are professionally done. They are very attractive, easy to use, and I highly, highly recommend that you use one of the built-in color schemes. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. So this particular poster is about prenatal care, and so I'm going to pick a color scheme that um, is softer, like this foundry one looks good for my particular poster. 
you can also um, create new theme colors and if you are good at colors and the color wheel and you want to do your own you could do it there but I'm just going to pick one of the built-in ones now that we have our color scheme chosen we can go through and start adding some color elements for instance the um, if I go back to design and go to the background styles it'll automatically pick up different background styles that work within that particular theme and I may or may not want to use one of these but I'm gonna just pick this kind of light green for now now I'm going to next separate my header a little bit I'm going to choose just um, a square from the shapes and when I go to the drawing tools then I can send it to the back behind everything and I'm not sure that I really love this green but let's pull down under the drawing tools this shape styles and we can just hover around these different elements and it'll automatically change and I kind of like this blue that's nice so now all of a sudden our, our poster just with those small changes has gotten a lot more interesting another area where you will want to add some color are these headings so these you can do this a couple different ways so the first way is you have the text box and you go to drawing tools and again over here under the shape styles there are um, different fills for that and actually I'm going to pick one over here so I can see what that's going to look like so again if you you just hover on these different elements you can see what they would look like so kind of like the the contrast of of the pink on this one but again you know pick one that that you like there are some ones that you know are more 3d if you will and you could change that so I sort of like this one but I don't like the white um, text on it so you can change all of this stuff so the text fill on this I'm gonna make black could have pulled this down and, and again hover on the different colors to see um, and maybe I'll, I'll make this the, the darkest pink which is real close to black so what I want to do next is apply this style that I've got to the rest of my headers and in this case the format painter doesn't work so great because I have um, styles applied to the text box and then to the text itself but what we can do is we can highlight all of the other headers so if I click one hold the shift key down and click all of the other ones Make sure I find them all here so with the shift key held down click all of the headers so that they're all selected like that and then you can let go of the shift key and go to drawing tools and pick the pink you can see when I hover they all change because they're all selected and the text fill we're going to make that the darkest pink and then on the home button we're going to middle align that text so we went over the the basic way to do the headers and you can get more creative if you want so if you go up to insert and go to shapes there are all these different kinds of shapes that, that you could use so for instance we could use one that looks like a, a little arrow here and to add text to it just right click and go to edit text and I'm going to type history on that and then the same color rules apply so if you go up to drawing tools you can pull this down we can apply that same um, pink and again the the same dark pink text and so forth so it's similar but a little more interesting beyond that you can also insert maybe some clip art and here I've I've searched for um, booty for like a baby booty and it's good to find one with a transparent background they usually look the best so we'll try this one so I could move this up here and make it a little bit smaller and then again if you go to picture tools to recolor then you have all of these theme colors so if I pick this blue then you can see that it, it matches the blue up top which looks nice the last step on this if you if you try to move this it's not going to move with our little booty so if you select the element the title element hold the shift key down and select the booties right click on it go to group and group it together now they'll move around and now you could just copy and paste this 
um, make copies of it to, to do all the other ones so that they look like this. So next we need to talk about getting some pictures in here. Uh, pictures are important. They, they help convey your message and are interesting. If you have your own pictures that you've taken, that's fantastic. Just make sure that they're high resolution. Again, you can make pictures smaller. You cannot make them larger. So finding photos, um, there's a few ways to do this. One is that you can just go to the insert clip art function in PowerPoint and I could look up uh, pictures of babies for instance and I will only I only want photographs for this I think clip art clip art has a, a purpose and it's not bad but I don't know that it's always professional so I'm just going to look for babies in photographs so I'm gonna hit go here and there are some some good photos that are built into Microsoft and they are high resolution a lot of them are, are pretty big so you could use um, any of these that you want to another great place to find photos that are legal now you can obviously you could just go to Google and search for photos but you can't use those legally so to find legal photos you have to look for ones with a Creative Commons license okay so this is a fabulous website search.creativecommons.org and I'm going to start with Flickr and I'm going to look for this is prenatal so I'm gonna look for pregnancy and you can go through and and you can do one at a time basically but I'm gonna start with Flickr because that's that's a big database of, of images and I'm just get hit hit enter there so it's going to go to Flickr it's going to find all of the photographs licensed with the Creative Commons license that we could use for our poster so let's say I found uh, a picture that I, I want to use in my poster that's under the Creative Commons license the first thing you need to do is scroll down to the license area and click on the some rights reserved and see what the author wants you to do so we're free free to share this to remix it and we have to attribute the work okay so and if you build upon it you're supposed to share it after that which is fine we're not going to be doing that in this case so um, the first thing that, that I like to do is to just copy this user's name because we're going to need to um, give them credit for this photo so I'm going to click on the photo I'm going to um, right click on it and I'm going to go to the original so it depends on the photo but there are different sizes you can download again you can make pictures smaller you can't make them bigger so always get the biggest one that you can also these posters are huge and so even though a photo might seem really large it's probably not as big as you think once you get it on the poster okay so once you've got the size you want um, we're going to save this image you could copy paste it too um, I'm just going to put this on my desktop real quick okay and then in my poster let's go back to the poster so I'm going to insert picture and I'm gonna go to my desktop and get my photo see this is the full size and you can see it's, it's not it's not that large once you once you get it on here and you can do some really neat things to photos so with this photo um, click on the picture tools when it's highlighted and you can do things like recolor it okay so and you can hover on these different color schemes and this one is matches the background color of the one I have and this is um, going to make it more pink and there's other variations of this so this is just sort of a, an element that kind of brings some interest to to the bottom of my page so I'm just going to use this pink one real quick and there's also obviously frames and all kinds of cool things that, that you can do to photos I'm just going to bring this in as an element now one thing I need to do is I have to um, credit the person who took this photograph so um, I'm gonna say it's kind of large but that's okay photo by Flickr user and I'm gonna paste that Flickr user okay and then after this then we can obviously make this a lot smaller this doesn't have to be that big 
And that's all you really need to do. So if someone wanted to find this photo, they could go to Flickr and look up that user and find this photo. Another way that you can use photos is to put a large photo in the background of your poster. And this can have a really nice effect, especially from across the room. So to do this, I'm going to use one of these Microsoft Office photos because these are high resolution. You, you can stretch these out and they, they, look, they look good. So I like to put this on the slide master view. That way you're, you're not trying to send it to the back. And again, it's, it's easy to click on this by, by accident. So I'm going to go to view, slide master, and this is the background of, of your slide. And I'm going to click on this picture of these little feet and I'm going to drag it to the edges and remember I have my header up here that's going to cover this up which is fine. Now I think that all this black is going to be tough on the printer and, and I don't know that I want that stark of, of a photo. So again under the recolor I can choose um, one of these lighter versions and I kind of like this one so that it's, it's not so dark and then I have to go to slide master and close the master view and you can see how then that's put in the background and I could go in and adjust it it's a little bit high but th the problem with putting a picture in the background like that is that it's hard to read the text and you you really want people to read the text you don't want them to be looking at this photo even though it's eye-catching you really want to draw their attention to the main part so what I like to do is to insert uh, blocks behind these text areas so that you can read them a little bit better. So uh, go to insert and then shapes and you can use the square or the, the rounded rectangle or, or any of the shapes that you want. I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle because just make it a little bit softer. I'm just going to draw this shape and click on drawing tools. First thing you need to do is send it to the back. Now this green really isn't what I want um, but if I go to uh, these different colors, obviously we can pick one in our theme. And there's also some different gradients and so forth. So I'm going to start with this one. And then under Shape Fill, um, it's sort of a hidden thing. If you go to Gradient, More Gradients, what you'll get is this um, Format Shape area. And a really cool thing that you can do, like it has a gradient fill. I'm just going to do the Solid Fill and I'm going to pick um, maybe one lighter than that and then under transparency I'm going to make it just a little bit transparent that way you can see the picture behind it so you're it's much easier to read this text right but you can still see the picture behind it so I'm going to highlight this I'm going to copy it using control C control V to paste put one here and I'm going to send that to the back all right and paste one more we're gonna align all this stuff at the end don't worry it'll look really good when we get done with it and again send this to the back and you can see generally you know what this would look like once we get everything lined up that um, and you can mess around with the transparency I might make this a little more transparent but you can still see the picture behind it which is nice but you're, you can read the text um, much easier. The next thing I want to, to show you is how to bring in some, some other graphical elements that might make a, a better impact than a bunch of words. So under the insert, there's, um, there's obviously these shapes which are, are kind of fun, and then there's one that's called Smart Art, which is fairly new. Past couple of versions of, of Office have had this. So if you click on Smart Art, it has all these different ways to display, convey an idea. And they're broken out into list, process, cycle, hierarchy, relationship, matrix, and pyramid. And so if you have like a process that you're trying to show, putting in one of these elements is, is usually a little more interesting than just listing it so might choose this upward arrow okay so here it, it has the arrow and you can it has little text boxes here um, so I'm instead of the the future plans over here I think I'm going to to put this in oops more data how about more data 
And so I'm just going to put some sample text in here real quick. Okay, so I just put um, some stuff in there and then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And let's say that I, I get rid of this text box for, for future plans and I can move this down and maybe make some of my other text a little bit smaller. It's getting a little bit tight over here. But just putting in a little bit of art like that makes a big difference. I mean, all, all of a sudden your, your eye is drawn to this, this cool arrow. Now, the other great thing is because you picked your color scheme, when you click on it, it'll go to the Smart Art Tools and there's a design here and it has all these different designs and you can also change the colors so that if you want in this case I might want to bring in that blue again from from the top okay so kind of tie it all in together so I think this blue looks good I got the pink and I got the, the kind of tanny taupe color um, but you can play around with that and and I think that that'll really add some pizzazz I mean it gets kind of boring to read lots and lots and lots of bullet points Another element that you might want to add, especially in your um, results section, um, is, is, is a graph. And it, the same rules apply. So insert and then chart, and you can pick what kind of chart. Sometimes it's a column chart, and you may already have this data in an Excel spreadsheet. And you can copy-paste that in, or you can start in PowerPoint and, and just do one from scratch or maybe a pie chart. And there's obviously different kinds of pie charts. Um, I'm just going to do a simple one for now. Okay, so I have this pie chart now. And let me zoom out so I can see it a little bit. And obviously this would have um, more information on it. I'm just kind of throwing this in just as an example for now. So again, when you insert a chart, it will pick up the, the color scheme and you can pull down the, the design and you can um, choose a design that fits best with your with the rest of your design. I think this one looks pretty good. And, and also the colors. So this is bringing in a green, which I haven't really brought in before. So, so maybe I'll, I'll try maybe this blue again to have sort of the, the blue and pink. And again, you can play around with this, and there's um, there's all kinds of different ways to to change the backgrounds and and all kinds of information. So here's like the the shape fill. Um, I could do no fill, and then that's going to make it transparent because it was white before. And it also has this border around it, which I'm not super happy about. So I'm going to have no outline. Now you have this nice kind of floaty pie chart in there which I think looks really nice and obviously you put your title and what these different um, slices of pie stand for. The last part of, of the poster creation, there's always a lot of tweaking and, and you may want to add some more colorful elements and stuff but really the most important thing is to align everything. I can't stress it enough. You, a poster that has elements like this one looks pretty decent in terms of the colors but the alignment is all over the place and you can't do it just using your eyes you have to use the tools that really align stuff so I'm going to teach you how to do that real quick so the shift key is is key here so you click on one object you hold down the shift key you click another and you click another and you go to the arrange align Okay, and in this case, I want to align all these things to the top. Now they're all aligned to the top. You can also um, add in different rulers and stuff. So under view, um, you can add the ruler, okay, and then you can really line stuff up on the ruler if you want. You can also add grid lines, okay. So the grid lines are, they're kind of, I, uh, there's a lot of grid lines when you're doing a poster. However, if you really want it to look good, then you can line them up on the grid line. So I'm going to line that up. This should line up with the center line, which we turned on in the beginning. This one should line up there too. And that one looks 
pretty good. This one, now I moved, so for instance, I moved this one right to this first edge here, and so you definitely want to leave some space. Okay, so I'm going to put that one close to that edge so that if we zoom out again, we have equal spacing on, on either side. Okay, so that's, that's the first part. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, I made some changes to the header. I think that that, that looks good. Everything's aligned up there. So next we need to do these, um, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. We need to align these, these background items. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to align those on the grid with that, that first line that I have this lined up with. And the same over here, I'm going to align that here. Now, I have these three areas, and this one is very squished, and it's really hard, for instance, to, to figure out what the exact center is, but there's a tool for that. So if I highlight this one, this one, and this one, then I can go to Arrange, Align. First, I want to align them at, at the top, looks like one of them got off. So I'm going to align those at the top. And I'm going to go to Arrange, Align, and I'm going to distribute them horizontally. That's going to, I, I guess I guessed pretty good, but that's going to shift it so they're equally distant. In fact, let me squish this over here so you can see better. So again, if I shift and click all of them, Arrange, Align, Distribute Horizontally, then it's going to snap that into place. Now, I don't love the way that this looks because I've got more space on the outside than I do in between these two columns. So under the drawing tools, um, again, you have this height and width. And so I'm just, with all three of them highlighted, I'm just going to make them a little bit smaller. So I think that that looks good. I want to make sure that this is still lined up. And again, you can do things like if I really want to make sure these things are lined up, I do the same thing. Click them, align, and I'm going to align those on the left. This and this, they're not aligned so much anymore. Align on the right. Right. And now, since all these are the same width, arrange, align, and I'm going to distribute horizontally. Now, that looks really good. Now, they're up they're they're too close here. I think that first I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to move them down just a little bit. Okay. And now I think that we, we need some more room up here. So I'm just going to take the top and, and drag it down a little bit. Okay. So it's on that other first grid. So you can really see how these grid lines help out. So now all of my backgrounds are lined up. So next you can approach this a bunch of different ways. So, and, and it's a lot of back and forth and tweaking um, to get it all aligned and all right. But, but again, it makes such a big difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this first column and get it all lined up. Then I'll align other elements with it. So I zoomed in a little bit. And first of all, all this stuff needs to move down a little bit because we move the top down. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys and, and move those down. And I'm going to move it down again on the grid. We have this curved line, so I'm going to um, I'm going to move it down to that first grid line. Now these I think need to be centered with this. Okay, so I'm going to click the background, and I'm going to use the shift key and click all these headers. Okay, and I'm going to arrange, align. I'm going to align these on the center. It has these little pictures to help you out. Okay, so now these are all center aligned. You can see the little green dots all the way down. Those are all center aligned. The next thing that I'm going to do is these text boxes all need to be the same width. So let me see. I want to make one about the, the width that I want. And this is, and these two. So actually, let's do these first. So I'm going to drag these to that side, and I think that actually looks pretty good. Maybe drag that back just a little bit. This is not lining up exactly 
this is not lined up on the grid. You can see it's lined up on one side but not the other. So the, the width that we chose is not perfect. But we can also do some math here. So the width of this is 12.3 and the width of this is 9.96. Let's make this 10.3. Okay, that's going to be easier to do math with. So I'm going to again highlight, I'm going to highlight all of them because I want them all to be the same, right? So we're going to make all of those 10.3. Now all of our headers are the same. And I'm going to do the same with the text boxes, okay? Um, again, I know this sounds very picky, but when you see a poster that's done this way where everything is the same width and so forth, it looks so much better. Okay, so now everything's the right width. Now we just have to line this up. So let me make sure that this is still lined up. And these, these look fine. All those are are lined up. But these these are not. So these text boxes we need to probably align left with this. So I'm going to highlight all of these. Oops. Shift and click. Kind of bounces around. It's a little bit annoying. And I'm going to go here, my align tools here, align and left. Okay, great. And let's just check. So everything's aligned down the center, heading wise, and down the left this way. Okay, and then the spaces in between, you can sort of, I think you can just sort of eyeball those. Now one of the things you can do is if you shift and click, you can see how far apart these two items are. And you want to make sure that's the same for each of those. So see, those are right on top of each other. And then when I shift and click these two items, you can see there's a space in between. So it depends on how much stuff you have on your... Um, now this one, it looks like the boxes line up, but the, the circles overlap. So I kind of like this spacing. So I'm going to just sort of move this down. Maybe move it down one more space here. Okay, so, so those are lined up the same. And this needs to go down. All of this needs to go down a little bit with the spacing. And those definitely need to come together a little bit more. Okay, so let's see. So those those are good. So again, you've got to look at the space in between your items and the space between the header and the text. And when again, when you're across the room and you're zoomed out and you see a poster like this where all the spacing is even, it looks so much better than let's say look at our middle column where the spacing is all over the place. This is this is professional. This is not. So. I'm going to go through and, and repeat what I've done on this first column on these other two columns. So I went through and, and aligned everything. I, I mixed some stuff up. I put this chart in the middle and then split this text, the, the remaining text into a box and put the picture on the side. Um, it did take, you know, five, ten minutes to get everything aligned um, all up, but you can see that it, it looks really good and if you go to view and turn off the grid lines um, you can see and, and one of the things like I and there'll be little things like I forgot to make this 10.3 somehow I missed that that last one so it's good to just go through and, and double check all of your alignment and and all of that but in the end I think you'll end up with a really nice poster that that conveys all of your fantastic research that you did during your internship or for a research project. Good luck!